Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Mariam. In today's video, I'm gonna be testing out, reviewing, and conducting a wear test on the new Makeup Forever Water Tone Tint Foundation. This is a super duper clean formula, like 94% clean ingredients. And although it's clean, is it too clean to be true? Is it too good to be true, basically, is what I'm trying to figure out. I know that clean at Sephora is kind of a new thing, and some of these formulations are just a little bit finicky. So I am going to be testing out this foundation on my oily AF acne prone skin. Of course, giving you a wear test and a verdict at the end. So make sure you watch this video in its entirety. Hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesday and Sunday videos. And now let's get into this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. Yeah, do that. And now let's get into this video. Makeup forever, water tone. Here we come. All right, so here we have it. The Water Tone Skin Perfecting Tint from Makeup Forever PR Package. So we've got three shades here, also a sponge and a brush for application. Now let's get some facts about this foundation. $37, 1.35 fluid ounce, so more than most foundations, which are one ounce. So this is supposed to be a super clean, silicone-free, oil-free, non-comedogenic type of skin tint that is safe for acne-prone skin, but on the Sephora for our website, it actually says that this is meant for dry, normal, and combination skin, which is not my skin, but I am hopeful because I do love Makeup Forever and they do have some really, really great foundations. So now at Sephora, we have 16 shades available, but in actuality, there are 20 shades all together and you can get those from makeupforever.com or from their stores. So basically this is supposed to minimize imperfections, provide 24 hour hydration, radiance, even tone, 94% natural ingredients. This is super clean, like uber clean. But as with most clean formulations, I feel like it's kind of a novelty in the makeup world. So a lot of the formulations are volatile, meaning that they're not very stable. They just don't work for certain skin types, especially for my oily skin type. I don't know. I feel like these clean ingredients and my oils just don't really mesh well. They literally don't blend, you know? But we shall see, like I said, just because this is a novelty, just because this is a new thing, doesn't mean that we can't get it right. Eventually we will get it right. Eventually these clean formulas will be the norm, right? I'm hoping so. All right, so let's test out these three shades that were sent to me. We've got the Y355. Y for yellow undertones. I feel like I should shake it up. Yep, it says shake before use, so let's do that. Made in France. Very, very, very liquidy, very sheer, but looks like it's a good match just because it blends in with my skin. Now, because these shades are so sheer is the reason why there's only 20 shades altogether because they're supposed to really suit a range of skin tones. But let's test out Y365, which is actually the shade that I typically wear in Makeup Forever foundations. I mean, this one looks good too. I guess they both sort of work. And then we also have the Y405. You know what I just noticed? I'm looking at this card and I'm looking at all the shades here and it looks like out of the 20 shades, there are only about one, two, three. There's only three red undertones. Everything else is yellow. So two of the deeper shades are actually a red undertone. And one of the lighter shades here, R230, is also red undertone. So this tells me that this is a very yellow leaning foundation. Interesting. Have you ever seen something like that? Can't say that I have. This Y405 is clearly not a match. You know what's weird? Because it's so sheer, it's not even a terrible match, even though it's clearly not my color. Alrighty, so now that we've tested out the shades, I am gonna go for one of the two lighter shades, either Y355 or the Y365. I think I'm gonna start with the Y355 first, and then I'm also gonna attempt to build it up with the Y365, just to see if this is a sheer to buildable, maybe perhaps medium coverage type of product. For my primer today, I have several options from Makeup Forever. You know, they're step one primers. We have the redness corrector here, we have the shine control, and we have the pore minimizer. I tend to use all three because I have all three concerns. I tend to get red, especially after I rub my face. My face definitely flushes very, very easily. Also, I have some like red post acne marks that I like to color correct. Also, because I'm really oily, I have enlarged pores in certain areas, so a pore minimizer is another primer that I would typically reach for. Plus, because I'm oily, I also need to control 
all my shines. So for today, I think I'm gonna use just a little bit of all three. A little bit of the redness corrector here on my chin, perhaps around my nose, that's where I tend to get really red. Maybe just like a little bit on these acne marks here. For my pore zones, I'm gonna use the pore minimizer. And this one's kind of like a putty type of primer. I'm gonna spread that out with my Charlotte Tilbury complexion, Hollywood complexion brush. I forgot how good this pore minimizer is. Unfortunately, the minimizing doesn't last, so it looks good at first, but because my skin is so oily, it tends to eat up this type of primer, which is why I always need a two-in-one, a pore minimizer and a shine control. But maybe this isn't needed in the case of this foundation because it is water-based, because it's supposed to be very sheer, very light, not heavy on the skin. Maybe my skin won't react the way that it does with most foundations. For my forehead, I'm gonna go for the shine control because that is a lot. But as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. My forehead is the area where I tend to get the most shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and mattify that area. I'm kind of doing the most with my skin prep today only because it clearly stated that this foundation, the Makeup Forever Water Tone, is not really meant for my skin type. So I'm really trying to prep it, I'm trying to give it that perfect base before application. Damn, that forehead is matte now. Holy crap. This almost has like a freezing effect on your skin. It definitely feels like a film that just tightens your whole skin area. But anyway, here goes. I'm gonna start with a Y355 foundation. I also have this cool 116 brush. This brush has a very unique dip on the top so you can kind of place your foundation in there, inside that little hole, and then apply it to your face. So I'm gonna do just that. And it kind of just rests there. Interesting. Oh, I just realized the Y355 might be a little too light. I don't know, this brush is cute, but it's a little too small for my face. Almost the size of that Charlotte Tilbury brush that I like to use for primer. Where'd that brush go? So small, I can't even find it. Yeah, so that's not my ideal size. That's not like my preferred foundation brush size for applying foundation. Also, I'm noticing that this foundation is drying very, very quickly. So it's not super compatible with that mattifying primer on my forehead. It was actually kind of difficult to spread it across. Although I was able to make it work, it wasn't like a pleasant experience, you know? I felt like I had to drag the brush. Damn, they're making so much noise. I don't know what to do with it. But I don't know if I actually see any coverage on my face. Face. There's definitely a bit of a blur. There's a pinch of color, but nothing too noticeable, nothing too drastic. All right, I'm gonna try out the sponge. I'm gonna mist the sponge with my Dominique Cosmetics Hydrating Mist. I'm gonna add a little bit of this Y365 to the back of my hand. And let's see if I can use the sponge to build up that color and coverage. Ooh, no. Ooh, no, that was a big mistake. So, so in this case, because I wet the sponge, it's actually lifting the foundation in a very unflattering manner on my forehead. So it's creating this very patchy sort of finish. Brush is not the way to go here. So I'm gonna actually remove my forehead. I'm gonna start from the beginning. We've had just a couple of blunders here with the forehead application. And that's quite surprising to me because my forehead is pretty smooth and pretty flawless compared to the rest of my face. I don't really have any major bumps or anything like that. So typically, it takes me no time to apply my foundation to my forehead. So I'm gonna say no to the wet sponge application. I'm gonna still attempt to do the shine control, but I'm only gonna apply a tiny bit of product this time. Actually gonna squeeze that to the back of my hand first. Tiny bit of product. I probably still have some in my brush. That's how much I applied the first time. And I'm gonna go with the shade Y365. I'm gonna apply just a little bit onto that brush, even though it's a small brush, but I kinda like the way that it holds the foundation in place. All right, that is a little bit better. That is a little bit better. We are heading somewhere here. I'm just gonna try to stipple some of this product on top of the previous layer, just to see if I can build up the coverage, but it doesn't look like to be a build of a foundation, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is the face, this is the coverage. Observe it. I mean, this finish looks like my skin, just a little bit better. You can see all of my freckles, some pores, though I will say that the pores look a little bit minimized, like in this area here. This side is better. Forehead, overall not bad. Very, very, 
natural. So now what I'm gonna do is apply the rest of my makeup, concealer, powder, blush, etc. For my concealer today, I'm gonna be using the Oma Beauty Stay Woke Concealer in the shade Fair Lady T2. Kinda light, should have thought about that. But it looks like it's applying quite fine over the water tone. So the only thing that really gave me trouble with this foundation application was the mattifying primer and the wet sponge application. And I think that had more to do with the fact that I applied way too much primer. Ooh, what's happening here? There's like a really unflattering streak, but it looks like I was able to blend it out just fine. Same thing on this side. Honestly, you just need to put a little bit of muscle into this application, especially over a mattifying primer like the one that I used. Looks good, so now for my powder, I'm gonna go for one size. I don't know, as much as I love the Makeup Forever HD powder, or rather, as much as I want to love the Makeup Forever HD powder, I just can't seem to make it work for me. I know it's a smoothing powder, I know it has a lot of flashback, but no matter what you do to it, no matter what you apply over it, it still flashes back, so I don't know, it's kind of like, a waste of a good product for me. And now we're in 2021. Now we have tons of options for really smoothing powders, such as the one size that I'm using right now that offers zero flashback. Just got this really cute brush in the mail. It's shaped like a rose. It's from It Cosmetics. It brushes for Ulta, so it's a limited edition brush, but it is just so, so gorgeous. So this is a powder brush that I am excited to test out. Going in very, very lightly with the powder just to kind of smooth the imperfections, give it just a nice finished look. For bronzer, let's go with something new. I have this new Morphe X Avani Greg Vacation Luminous Bronzer in the shade Bahamas. Ooh. Actually, let me go for a lighter shade, this one called Cali. I mean, this is a little light for a bronzer, but the other one just looks a little too glamorous for the skin finish that I have going on right now, so I'm gonna go for something much lighter. This is cute, it's got like a nice luminosity, it's got a yellow base, for blush, I'm gonna go with this Kiss of Copper Blonzer. So blush plus bronzer from Bare Minerals. Ooh, pigmented, pigmented. Was not expecting that. I was not expecting all that from Bare Minerals. That kind of threw me off. Next, we've got the Bronze Glow Highlighter from Bobbi Brown. I feel like, again, I'm just gonna grab very, very little bit because everything has been giving me more than what I was anticipating. So I'm gonna go for just a pinch of that, like that, and that's it. And then for the eyes, I've got the Summer Solstice Eyeshadow Palette from NARS. Gorgeous packaging, as to be expected with NARS. Palette's quite cute too. I'm just gonna go for something kind of iridescent. Be a bit of this shade here. Ooh, it's beautiful, very smoky. I wasn't even going for all that right now, but now I guess I am. Also gonna add just a bit of that red to the outer corner, and then of course I'm gonna blend everything out. Morphe brush, buffing out the edges. Just want an everyday, slightly bronzed, smoky kind of summery look, just like that. Pretty, 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 pretty. Next, I'm gonna take this beach bronze eyeliner from Casazita Jones, add that to the waterline, and then just quickly smudge out the bottom, and add a little bit more of that bronzy shade just to the lower lash line, just to seal that in. And I'm also gonna smudge that liner on the top lash line, just for a little extra definition. That's it, lashes time. Mascara time. Okay, cute. Kind of dramatic for every day, but I don't hate it. I'm gonna go for Sweet Cheeks Cream Glow from Huda Beauty. I'm already wearing the Muted Pink Lip Contour, also from Huda Beauty. I'm just gonna redefine my lips once more. All right, all right, now this vibe is suddenly just a little bit more fresh. I kind of like it, so now I'm gonna actually observe my skin, observe my face, and just judge the hell out of it. Let's start with the forehead. The forehead is looking pretty damn smooth, pretty luminous, pretty flawless, I would go as far as saying. There's a luminosity, but there's obviously no oils at all. The coverage is very sheer, but my forehead doesn't really have too many flaws. It's pretty even toned. So I don't think I necessarily need all the coverage on my forehead. So the forehead is looking really, really good. The cheeks on the other hand, this one specifically is looking just a bit patchy. There's like a couple of dry spots that the foundation tint was like clinging onto and it was hard for me to fix. It's not really ideal on this side of the face. I will say the foundation and also all the other products all the additional helpers that I used 
are pore friendly. They seem to be smoothing out the pores or at least not maximizing them. This side of the face looks pretty good as well, outside of the fact that I really overdid it with that bronzer. The bronzer, bronzer blush situation is just like, bam, really in your face. Ignore that. The rest of the skin looks pretty damn good too. I'm gonna take another quick close-up footage with the phone. All right, here is a quick close-up. You see what I'm talking about? What is going on here? What is going on in this area? It's just looking a little weird. I don't know. Whereas this side of the face looks a lot better. Forehead, like I said, looks pretty smooth, pretty luminous. So overall, I think I kind of like it. I like the finish, it looks very, very natural. I can see all of my freckles. Almost looks like I'm not wearing any foundation, but I am wearing a lot of blush, bronzer, and highlighter type of helpers. But I think for an everyday look, or if you wanna go for like a very youthful, very approachable kind of vibe, I think, just speaking from my first impression of this application, this seems like a promising product. It doesn't seem to be breaking up on my very oily skin, although there is already a bit of creasing around my nose, but that's to be expected. That pretty much happens to be with every single foundation, so I'm not really gonna complain. The most important part of this video, I think, is the wear test. Let's cue in that good old time warping music for that wear test, and let's see how it wears, and let's see if this clean foundation and formulation exceeds our expectations, shall we? All right, so it's 8 p.m. right now. I finished filming at around one, so it's been a seven hour wear test of this new Makeup Forever water tone tint foundation. This is the face. Let us observe. First, let's observe the forehead. I think the forehead, although pretty oily looking, pretty shiny looking, is actually appearing to be smoother than when I first applied the product on. I feel like the tint and also my skin oils got a chance to marry. They got a chance to really blend. And so the finish seems kind of smooth. Even though it's oily, it's kind of pretty. I am confused. I am also confusion at the fact that my forehead is actually the shiniest point of my face right now. The rest of my face seems to be pretty intact. Not perfect, but pretty good for a seven hour wear test for me, for someone who is oily AF. This is pretty good. This is looking, again, pretty. I can't really complain. Yes, you can see my freckles. Yes, you can see some of my imperfections. The pores are not giant like they usually are at this hour. They're kind of still smoothed out. They're still looking a little bit better than before. This side of the face with the bronzer, blush slash bronzer from Bare Minerals, is not as cute as this side, I feel, which never happens because I feel like I always do a better job of doing my makeup on this side, but in this case, I just overdid it with the bronzer and there is nothing I could have done. Even though this Makeup Forever water tone tint foundation is set to be for dry or normal skin, I feel like it wore pretty good on my oily AF skin. I really can't complain. The fact that they're calling it a tint foundation is interesting because I would probably call it just a tint, not a foundation. There isn't really that much coverage to this product, but if you pair it with some of your favorite concealers and powders, it will definitely give you a more flawless look overall. I keep looking at myself in the mirror because I'm just like shocked at how decent this looks after seven hours. As I was saying, for $37, this very clean formula tint foundation it's really good it's really decent my only complaint is that i wish i had spf but that's okay i can totally make do and uh make it work so with that said i am going to zoom on out and end this review on this very positive high note check out more of my videos right here a video that you may like or my most recent video click it Mwah. peace